Hi guys, in this video I will unbox and tear down a $20 gaming console that I received yesterday. Last night I played with this little bit and I must say, for the price this is pretty awesome. This is a Chinese clone of Nintendo's NES Classic mini console. This comes with 500 games pre-installed. You can't add any new games and most of the games that come with this are modified. They have different graphics or some other modifications. On the back of the console there's 3.5mm AV output jack and mini USB for power in this device. On the front there are these two old school controller connectors. They weren't used in NES or the NES Classic mini console, but I guess they use these because these are cheaper to get or for some other reason. Anyway, the controllers do look like NES controllers, but those are quite stiff, but I think they are quite playable. They could be much better, but hey, remember the price. This console doesn't have HDMI, instead it has the 3.5mm jack, which outputs composite video and analog audio, which are connected to the television using these RCA plugs. Resolution wise there's no problem at all because of the resolution of original NES and its games. There is a power supply in the box but I didn't use it and I don't plan using it because it feels so so cheap and it is probably a fire hazard. Can we see the ratings or the output? Well it seems to be 5 volts and 500 milliamps so just about any USB power supply should work. So that was everything that comes in the box. It is a plug and play system. You just need a television, plug this in and you can start playing. But I do recommend using a higher quality power supply. Next I will tear down this console. See how complicated or simple the circuit inside this is. Is there a possibility of adding new games or removing some crappy games that are pre-installed? And also how easy would it be to add a Raspberry Pi or some other single board computer while using the original connectors and buttons. The case comes apart after removing four screws that are on the bottom of the console. These both probably are keeping these PCBs from moving. And let's take a look at this small PCB first. This seems to be the main board. This has our old friend, chip on blob. Not much more on this side of the PCB. And on the other side, there's memory chip. I think it is 32 megabyte flash memory. There's one more interesting thing in this PCB, and that is this place for 4 pin pin header or 4 pin cable. I'm not sure what it is, but I will edit it on the video as well if I can find it out using continuity tester. Moving on, let's see how the power supply and the AV output connectors have been connected to the main port. There's one wire for the video, one for the audio, one for the power and one common wire for the grounds. And on this port there's also a small electrolytic capacitor. Overall connecting this to Raspberry Pi should be quite easy. In order to remove the front panel PCB, there's one more screw that needs to be taken out and it is under the controller connectors. And after removing that, this plastic part can be removed and the PCB is released. There's not much in this PCB. On the front left, there are the red LED with current limiting resistor, two buttons, non-locking type for the reset and locking type for the power and then there are the controller connectors there are no ICs no other components in this board I'm not sure what protocol interface the controllers use you might be able to reuse them with Raspberry Pi or you could just replace them with USB connectors and make life a little bit easier personally I do like this system I don't think I'm going to modify this, but it seems to be quite simple to ditch this main board and replace it with Raspberry Pi or other single board computer, if that is what you want. And just a reminder, there are like and subscribe buttons. You are welcome to use them if you haven't already. Check out my other videos. See you next time. Bye.